to our live video series. Today we are taking a look at the Kia Seltos SX and we're going to compare it to the 2022 Kia Sportage EXS. Now, a couple things have to go. First of all, if you're American and you heard me say Sportage right there and you're giggling, that's cool. You're going to giggle a lot this video because we're filming in Canada and that's how you say Sportage in Canada. I didn't make it up. I just do what they tell me to. So save me the comments on that one. And also, if you've ever watched, hey, there's Chuck going through. Wave, Chuck, you're on the internet. Hey, hey. hey, all right, there we go. All right, so if you're uh, joining us for the very first time, we do this video live, which is why we didn't edit Chuck walking through, didn't edit that out. So if you are watching live with us and you just want, if you're not watching live with us and you just want the content of this video, you can feel free to skip ahead to the three minute mark if you want. That's where we get going with the content. In the meantime, we're gonna let our live audience jump in. We're also going to uh, talk about some news and some notes. And if you wanna know how to join us live, I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, happy Monday to everyone. Happy uh, return from your weekend. If you want to join us live, you will see, uh, are we on the homepage? Yeah, we are. We're on the homepage and there you can see this little video playing right there. That's sort of our standard video that's up there right now. If you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock PM, which is what we're doing right now, you will see that our homepage changes and that live video sort of takes over that main spot. So we're gonna click into that live video and now you're joining us. You're gonna to have to watch a quick ad for a second, which I'm going to try to skip in a second here. And uh, anytime while you're watching that ad or while we're skipping that ad, I have to run a quick little ad for ourselves. There are three dealers that support this channel. Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, Owen Sound Hyundai. If you're in Ontario looking for a car, buy from them. You can connect through me, through to them through me using the link at the end of this description, end of this video in the description. I'm gonna put it up there. I run terrible ads. Has anybody ever noticed that? Anyways, you should support them. If you wanna connect with them, you can connect through me at the end of this video in the link in the description. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, we can treat you like a local dealer. All right, got a bunch of people on right now. So if you're a regular with us, do me a favor, hit the like button yet. If you're not a regular with us, I'm totally willing to earn it. Just make me a promise that at some point, if I say something that interests you, you also hit that like button as well. All right, so what's going on news and notes? Kia K3 is what I called it. I was wrong. Uh, looks like they're gonna call the Kia redesign of the Forte, the 2022 Kia Forte. So pretty original name. Um, I thought they might go with K3. I was wrong. Uh, I really thought they might go with K3. There was hints from behind the scenes that they were gonna go with a K3 on that. Uh, but for now, the 2022 Kia Forte is just that, a redesigned facelift 2022 Kia Forte. We should see that within a month or so. Uh, should be here next month. Uh, so that's coming up. And what else is going on news and notes? I don't know. Not a lot of time to cover the news and notes. So uh, we got about six seconds to go before we go to the three minute mark and we'll start from there. All right. So here we go. Three minute mark. Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Let's dig into these two vehicles. So first of all, if you have heard that the 2022 Kia Sportage is not this, uh, I always get told when I film this lately that I'm incorrect. This is not the 2022 Sportage. It actually is. The next generation 2023 Kia Sportage, this is where it gets confusing, will likely be out in January of 2022. Uh, strange things happen in the car world and that's probably when we're gonna see the next generation Sportage. So until that time, it's October that we're filming right now. This is our current and also 2022 Kia Sportage, even though it's 2021. We're also gonna talk over here about the 2022 Kia Seltos. That's been a really popular model online in the past little while uh, on our YouTube channel here. So we're gonna dig into that a little bit more, compare some differences, and I get asked about this a lot. We've done videos like this in the past, but I continue to be asked, can you show me some of the differences between these models? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go pretty in depth. We're gonna show you the inside, the details, the tech, a lot of the features that maybe the other videos don't show you. And that's why we're gonna spend about a half an hour doing this. So uh, uh, buckle up, get yourself a snack, get yourself a beverage. You'll need that. And uh, we'll have fun here. We'll do this. And if we go beyond 30 minutes, usually what we're doing is we're answering your questions or we've gone off topic on a question that people have and we'll stay for a few minutes on the off topic questions at that point. All right, first of all, let's jump right in here. Here are the keys for both cars. Now, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna film them on the table there. There's our Instagram address. If you wanna follow me there, I always tell you what I'm doing beforehand. So you can follow that. All right. There are the keys for this car. Do they look similar? They should, they are similar. You'll notice a big difference. The Kia logo versus the Kia logo and the remote start there. Other than that, they're basically the exact same. We've got the uh, buttons over there. We've got the same buttons over here. Excuse me, there's a power or a trunk button on this one here, which is not actually power. This isn't a powered trunk. So it just unlocks just the trunk, which you can do just again with the unlock button. So a little bit cleaned up version on this uh, key over here. The biggest difference is that remote start. You can get a remote start 
um, on either of these cars, but it comes from the factory on this Kia Seltos. So Kia Seltos and Kia Sportage are going to be very similar size vehicles. The Seltos is smaller, but you'll see some differences. So both of those keys, because they are keyless entry, because these are push-button start cars, I can keep them both in my pocket, the keys in my pocket. The only 2022 model in Canada, and I think North America, with the old logo so is the Kia Sportage. So uh, every other 2022 will have the new logo, but uh, old logo on that one. So let's just dig in for a second, show you quickly the pricing of these ladders. Uh, the EXS trim is the one we're looking at right now. There are a couple things I really like about this car, and there would be reasons to buy it over the Seltos, and the same goes for the Seltos. This one is $32,795. That's your MSRP. If you go to the Seltos, you're going to go to the SX Turbo that we're looking at today, $32,995. So basically, give or take, the exact same price. Uh, you can have your choice between these two models depending on what your preferences are. So let's go through and talk about your preferences. Before I go too far, I want to point out that this vehicle, obviously because it's going to be replaced soon, has been around for a while. They've refreshed it, they've tweaked it, they've touched it up, they've done some neat things, they've changed the option packages, and that makes this vehicle a little bit older in a couple ways. You probably won't feel that if you're a normal, average, every average, everyday average driver, but if you're a Kia nerd like myself, there's a few technology advancements that you're going to see. And really what we're looking at is if you are a tech savvy person and the tech matters to you more than anything else in the vehicle, the Seltos is going to be the one for you. If the tech matters a little bit, you want some of the new tech, you may find that this vehicle is just fine because it has a few extra features. And let's just show you the first feature that I absolutely love when we jump in here. First of all, cars are not clean. I got in trouble in the comment section for not cleaning the cars. And I do apologize, but when you do this live every day, you can't always prioritize the cars that you need clean uh, versus the cars that we actually sell. So neither one of these cars are properly cleaned, but it is what it is. All right, down here, powered seats. That's a nice feature. Cloth seats, I'm totally fine with that. I like cloth seats, but here is the one main feature you cannot get in any Seltos of any trim level. It is this panoramic roof. And this, to me, is the main reason to buy a Kia Sportage today. And I'm trying to show you the back panel as well. There's the rear panel, and my camera's not tilting enough. We're coming back to the front panel. These are huge, huge glass panels, and they are well worth the purchase price of this vehicle for that alone. I quite like that uh, feature there. So again, big, huge uh, glass panels, and they are kind of awesome. And so he says, ignore the haters, the car's a little... This is my point to the person who commented about the dirty cars. He said that it reflected poorly on our dealership. And I said, well, what other dealership does a live video every single day? We got to make some priorities. It's either I wash the car or I video the car at this point. So I'm choosing video. All right, sunroof is pretty cool. The other kind of nice thing here is you still have these LED style lights. So they are white LEDs. You didn't always have them in the Sportage. Things have been updated over time. They do give this interior a very rich interior feel. Now they are a little bit different to so turn them on. Uh, compared to the Seltos, I have to press that in. You can hear the click, click. There's a click, click, and that's fine. I don't mind the click, click. Uh, one other thing up there that a lot of people wish they had on the Seltos, sunglasses holder is up here. It is nice and soft inside, uh, but you do get that on the Sportage. For whatever reason, it seems like they're moving away from that in a lot of the current Kia Hyundai vehicles. Uh, again, I don't use it, so it really doesn't affect me at all, but a lot of you are upset that it's going away. It is still here on the Sportage. It will probably not be on the next generation Sportage. All right, let's take a look over here, flip across, and I get another nice thing, push button start. So we're, because we're indoors today, we're not gonna fully start the car. We're just gonna open or turn it to the on position. And you can see in here, let's ignore the fuel efficiency. 19.8 liters per 100 kilometers. This is what happens with dealership cars when they idle for people. That's not at all going to be your mileage in this car. Uh, I will say the Seltos does get better mileage. So we're going to look at the government ratings to compare cars, not the dealership sitting around idling cars because we idle cars for a whole bunch of reasons around here um, and just you have poor fuel mileage. So you've got a nice uh, display here. It is a color display. You can see that little red point there. That is a little bar graph that will move and show your instant fuel economy and then your average is above. And that's kind of a nice uh, simple display to show you your instant and your average fuel economy all in one. Uh, but again, you have sort of the standard type things in here. Oh, 51.3 liters per 100 kilometers. You can see, again, vehicles idle around here. Uh, so various trip um, odometers. This is pretty cool, too. You have your uh, kilometers per hour in a digital thing. And some people have asked in the past, can you switch it to miles per hour? Earlier um, 
earlier Kia Sportages, you could not switch it to miles per hour on the digital dash. You saw earlier when I flipped it down here, it says hold for miles per hour, which we will do right now, and it switches to miles per hour. So very, very simple to switch it over. Uh, you can easily do that. And of course, you see the kilometer still empty up top there, 104 miles, which I guarantee you equals right about 667 kilometers. So we got that going in there. You'll also, also notice the lane keeping assist light up there. So lane keeping assist, uh, does exactly that. It has an active system where it can sense the lane markers and actively keep you in the lane. Now, a lot of people with lane keeping assist feel like it holds you in the lane. And for the most part, it kind of does. Once you have lane follow assist, which we'll show you in the other vehicle, lane follow assist is more precise. And in my opinion, lane keeping assist on those vehicles with lane follow assist is less precise. So you can have something that just bounces you between lane markers when you have lane keeping assist um, and lane follow assist. Uh, or lane keeping assist, you'll find that sometimes it holds you. The bigger thing is it keeps you in those lane markers above 60 kilometers an hour, and it is capable of actively steering, steering the car, which sounds crazy, but it actually works very, very well. All right, coming across here, this is the larger screen, but it's only the 8-inch screen. Now, when I say only, uh, it's still a very impressive screen in here. These cars, when they first came out, started with like a 3, 4-inch screen at best. Uh, now you have a nice big color display screen, and let's just show you the backup camera. Backup camera is pretty clear as well. Uh, you can see if I turn the wheel a little bit, the blue line stays centered with the car. The yellow and red line go exactly where the, or roughly where the car is going. But you have a pretty clear uh, display screen here. I would say it's a little warmer in color tone than the Seltos. Um, you probably won't see that in the video, but again, nice clear back of camera. And it's big. Like, again, 8-inch screen is still pretty big. And I say big, and I apologize sometimes for it, because the Seltos that we're about to show you is going to have a 10 and a quarter inch screen. So this is 8 inches, 10 and a quarter is bigger still, and you will see some advantages there. However, your backup camera is essentially the same size on both cars, because the it does not go widescreen on the backup cameras in current Kia vehicles. All right, coming down here. So again, a lot of nice things in here, lots of menu items, all kinds of things you can choose in here. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are in here. They are wired in both these cars. You have wireless in some of our other cars, and that's perfectly fine that they're wired, I think, in this car. Um, so again, lots of things to show you. And when you turn on the stereo here, it is just an AM and FM system. So if we go to the band here, AM and FM, uh, we can go to the band AM and FM only. So you will see that some of that technology jumps up at this price point in the Seltos, AM, FM satellite, and Bose audio in that car. But again, no panoramic roof. One other thing I should point out is we're going down here to the transmission, six-speed transmission here. It's a traditional automatic transmission, but it is, in this car, capable of towing 2,000 pounds. If you have a small utility trailer, or regular utility trailer, and small camping trailer, Sportage is going to be your option. Seltos is not rated to tow in North America, so you can't tow with it, really. I mean, it's not something I would advise anyways. Uh, coming down here, you've got some pretty cool buttons that are just easy to work. A lot of you guys like buttons and knobs. Sportage has that. Knobs for climate control, buttons that are easy to understand. And what I really like down here is the heated seats and heated steering wheel buttons. They're in this nice location that's kind of centralized in front of you. You can see it. And yeah, let's get the gear shift out of the way. So you can turn them on. If you want to hold them up, turn them off, you can just hold them down and they turn off. And then of course, you've got down here, new is a wireless phone pad. Not, not brand new, but the Sportage hasn't always had the wireless charging phone pad. This is nice and rubber padded, so your phone stays in place. You can see a little light there when it's working. 12 volt, 12 volt, and USB. Personally, I think it'd be nice if you had two USBs and a 12 volt, or honestly, three USBs and maybe USB-C would be great. Uh, you don't have that, but you do have the two 12 volts and a single USB. That's where you would connect for your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I just want to point out that there's a lot of shipping plastic on both of these cars. That's why this doesn't look right. I could peel this off for you. Eh, we'll try to do that. There you go. You can see letters. So when you see something that doesn't look right because of a fitter finish plastic type thing, it's usually exactly that plastic. Drive modes in this car, eco, sport, and normal. So no smart mode. And that's where you start seeing the age of this car. The smart mode has come along as the new eco mode, essentially. Smart mode uh, can sense by how you push the pedal and uh, will allow the car to move into a normal or sport mode just by the way you're driving. This one only has eco, sport, or normal. you got to switch in between on your own, which is, again, perfectly fine. You'll see that in the Seltos as well. Um, I happen to like the smart mode the best for efficiency, and this car is not quite as efficient as the Seltos. So that's something else to keep in mind there. Perfectly fine for a small crossover, but not quite as efficient as the Seltos, which does have less power, which is, oh, uh, maybe not. Ooh. 
More torque? Ooh, I haven't checked my specs on this. I think it has more torque, but maybe not horsepower. Very similar, because the Seltos does have the higher power. Excuse me, I haven't looked that up. Down here, the all-wheel drive system thinks for itself. You don't have to hit this button. What you do use this button for is if you're stuck in the snow. You can sit, press that button down, and it will lock the front and rear wheels together at slower speeds with the wheel straight, uh, so that each wheel spins at the exact same time. And when you think about it, when you go around a corner, um, your outside wheels and your front wheels and rear wheels, they all take different lengths different lines through there right so they have to spin at a little bit different speeds going around the corner when you press that button they will essentially not take different speeds and that can help you get get you unstuck um, but most of the time let the system think for itself and you'll be good one thing i really like here electronic parking brake it's pretty cool press the brake on push down it works exactly like a handbrake up is on down is off hill descent control auto hold on the parking brake as well regular cruise control that's it no smart cruise control and that's totally fine and then of course bluetooth controls auto headlights um, with the fog lights as well, which will turn them on for later. You also have blind spot detection here, which I really quite like. Blind spot detection also gives you, can you see it there? I don't know if you can see it in the mirror. There we go. That'll turn orange on you in the mirror when there's uh, somebody in your blind spot. And you also have the rear cross traffic alert, which is really handy if someone's crossing your path uh, from behind you. Uh, it can warn you in your backup camera and with beeping. So that is the basic rundown of the Sportage. We're about halfway through this video. Let's jump to the Seltos, take a few uh, looks at the differences in that car, then we'll go take some questions, then we'll go back seat, trunk space. Those are things you'll probably want to see in these cars. All right, let's jump out here. If you haven't left a like yet, somebody gave me a hard time. They said it's a little lame that I ask for likes. I'm going to ask for likes. Just, just do it. Just hit the like button if you think it's worthwhile. Uh, if this isn't uh, your favorite video, hey, I get that. Uh, you don't have to watch the whole thing. But uh, if you watch, if you hit the like button on this, people that are like you will be sent this. All right, Seltos. I want to mention in the uh, both the Sportage and the Seltos, on these higher trim levels, you have a padded armrest on both sides. Lowest trim levels, the LX models, you don't have that padded armrest. So there are some nice little details that upgrade throughout the vehicles. In this vehicle, you're getting the Bose audio. You're also getting an artificial leather. Uh, it is a... Um, Frankly, it's just as good as real leather. In my mind, it's better. It has a nice grip to it. It's nice and soft to touch. It's got the perforations through there because these are ventilated and heated seats. We'll talk about that in a second. You still have the same power adjustments you had in the Sportage. And as you sit inside, it feels just about as roomy as the Sportage. Maybe a hair narrower is the first thing you're going to notice, uh, but pretty good. If you're a bigger person, it's possible the Sportage may be bigger. I'm not sure. It depends on who you are. Let's turn it on. One thing you'll notice again, still has a sunroof, but obviously not that panoramic sunroof. You want the panoramic sunroof, only the Sportage is going to give it to you. Coming in through here, oh, signal light's on. Again, ignore fuel efficiency. Hey, there is no fuel efficiency. Pretty cool dash in here. Again, we talked about the color screen before. This is a much higher resolution screen. It is a colored dash. Uh, if you do things like play with the drive modes and go to sport mode, for instance, you can see the dash change on the left side. It's pretty cool. But no matter what mode you're in, you're going to have a digital speedometer there. You're going to have a lot of the same functions in here. So even though this is the similar, um, uh, similar dash, you're going to have a lot of the same screens that you would have had in the other car. The other car has a four-wheel drive screen. This is actually a bar graph. That the bar graphs kind of fill in uh, depending on your... Um, depending on your, uh, I guess I can't show you anything different there, but depending on the how much power is going to each wheel. And one thing that's pretty cool about both these all-wheel drive systems, they are not slip and grip systems. So what that means is it doesn't wait for the front wheels to lose traction before it decides to send power to the rear. That's a bad system. That's an old system. You don't want that in your car. What you want is a system like this, where it sends power to all four wheels, and then as it senses it's maintaining traction, it'll move that power to the front. Uh, the ability to split the power up to 50-50 in both these cars is, is uh, available. And again, you'll always start in all-wheel drive. So imagine losing traction and then hoping by sending power to the rear wheels that that'll help you gain traction. That's not what you want. You never want to lose traction. You never want to get that skittish feeling. Uh, and that's what these cars are much better at with having that all-wheel drive system. So I can explain that in more detail later, but it is a really important thing to point out. Um, liters per kilometers, we talked about some of these things here. Uh, this is just your drive mode uh, sort of information thing. You can see when it's in smart mode right now, it says smart eco. If I get into the throttle, there's a bar graph that moves dynamic or econ. If it goes into the dynamic too much, it's going to move you into normal or even sport mode. And you'll just see a little bar graph moving back and forth as you're driving if you're on that screen. And this will change to smart normal or smart sport. Uh, and again, that's part of the drive mode system, which again, sport mode is there, normal mode is there, and smart mode is there. So... Uh, and again, you're always labeled your drive mode up there, unless it's normal, I think. Maybe not. Oh, hold on. Let's go back to normal. 
sport mode, it'll go up to the top left in a second. There it is, but I think the normal mode is not there. Am I right? I am. See? There we go. All right, so we're going to keep it in the smart mode. All right. Um, speedometer, again, always digital speedometer on this one, so you can't get that same digital speedometer center. Because this has navigation, you can get navigation information through um, this big screen over here, or you can get it through... Whoops, come on, camera. Or you can get it through over here. Now, this looks like it has more glare than it does because it has an extra little plastic layer, which we're going to take off. Uh, and whenever I film, screens have more glare than they do in person because you're looking with one eye instead of two. We'll look at this screen in a second, but first, let's try to get a look at that screen right there. This is very difficult to see, but there is a little pop-up screen here, which is a heads-up display. If you want that heads-up display, whoops, come on. Uh, then you can get it here. Now, again, it looks tiny in camera, but you can see it well in person. One thing I like about this car compared to the like, Kia Soul, the Kia Soul, I'm kind of looking down like this at it, whereas this car, I'm still looking out over the field of view, so I don't have to really change my focus to see it in my peripheral vision, uh, which works quite well. And again, it is much larger in my life than it is uh, in your screen here, so it's just hard to show that. Really quickly, we're going to get to your questions in just a second. Let's just go over the basics of this screen. Again, that navigation is the big thing here. So if we had the map up, we could show you the map. You can go one-third screen or you can go full screen. So right now, this is one-third screen. And uh, we can make it full screen if we wanted to. It thinks we're in at night because we're indoors. So you can see that. Uh, when you pull this up, this is pretty cool. You can cycle through a lot of things in here and some information there. If your radio was on, you'd have it there. And again, the radio on this one is an upgrade. Bluetooth streaming, which they both have, but this is a Bose audio system with HD radio and Sirius XM. So it is an updated stereo system here. That's pretty nice. And actually, if, whoa, let's turn that down for a second. If we go over to the radio screen, you have it full screen, or if you don't want it full screen, see how they switch there? You can make full screen. It's got a pretty cool little look here. Just kind of a modern look. Some people like it. Some people think it's gimmicky. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool to have something unique and different. And uh, it looks pretty cool to me. So you've got that. We'll show you the backup camera here as well. It is only a sort of two-thirds style screen. You can change the view a little bit if you wanted to go and look straight down the back of the car. You could do that and see right behind you. Uh, most of the time, you're just going to leave it like this. But again, very clear. Same exact system as the last car. Uh, so very easy to see there. And again, you can cycle through these things if you want your radio or whatever you want up there. Um, so let's put on let's uh, let's put on radio. Oh, the radio's not going there. I don't know. We'll do that later. Okay, so we'll put the car in park. Coming down here, another big advantage of this car, the automatic climate control. It is a digital system, so you set it to 22, leave it on auto, it will figure itself out. And you can even change the fan speed. So sometimes when the fan goes really loud and it just really gets pumping, um, you can just uh, keep that a little bit less so it won't go above half, essentially, when you have it down on this level, which means you never get that noise or that real blast of wind uh, when you set that down. So we're going to turn it off just to save some battery life. Down here, same idea exactly as the last car. Instead of having the wireless charging down here, you have wireless charging up here. You've lost one of the USB ports, or one of the 12-volt ports, excuse me, in favor of two USB ports, which I think is the way it's good mix of what it should be. Drive mode switches right there. We've kind of reviewed them. Ve heated seats there. Rump roasters, I like to call them. Ventilated seats there. And that is really quite nice in the summer. Just keeps you from sweating on these leathery seats, even though it's not real leather. Feels very nice. I'm going to turn them off for a second. And, of course, you also have your heated steering wheel over here. Everything else is very similar. Again, hill descent control, the four-wheel drive lock button, all that same electronic parking brake over here. One thing you do gain here is the ability to have the smart cruise control. So that's going to keep that distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. And you've got the lane follow assist. This is a more precise lane keeping assist, more precise ability to steer the car for you, keep yourself centered in the lane. When you're centered in the lane, that... Um, that lane keeping assist sees the lane marker, holds you center, and it works at uh, speeds, basically all speeds, all regular driving speeds. So it can work below 60 kilometers an hour, which you don't always have in the, um, in the Sportage. One final thing, let's just quickly look up. Again, we'd mentioned no um, sunglasses holding there. There's these three buttons there. Those three buttons are part of a cell phone app. You can get a cell phone app on this car that can remote start the car, that can find uh, different things on this, uh, like find your car, locate features, that kind of thing. And... You've got LED lights in here as well, which I could turn on with the switch, which is fun. Then all the lights turn on. You can see there's a big light bar there, the two individual lights right there. But if I just want my map light on, check this out. I'm just going to touch the glass and it works. Just touch the glass. That's kind of the on off. There's still some shipping plastic again around up there. So there we go. We are 24 minutes in. We're going to go rear seat and trunk space. But before we do that, I want to take your questions. If you have a like to leave, go ahead and leave your like. Let's jump out right now and uh, we'll go take your questions. I do want to turn the other car off just to save the battery for a second. We've got the lights on on that car. All right, so I've seen a few questions come in. Uh, if you haven't asked your question, go ahead, ask it now. 
And uh, I'm gonna go answer those questions, but first I just wanna make sure this car is turned off for a second. We'll need to look at the lights, the back seat, and the trunk in a second. All right, so let's go back over here. Somebody says, finally caught a live. Cool, welcome to our live video. All right, so here we go. Over to your questions. Okay, panel sunroof available in Hyundai. Okay, yeah, so there's other, other vehicles that have the panoramic sunroof that are not available in North America, that's true. Um, why does the Celtos have the pop-up display when it's not even available in the new generation 2023 Sportage? So first of all, 2023 Sportage, uh, I haven't got the full details on, so we're not fully sure what's coming to North America. So before we hesitate about what comes or doesn't come on that car, let's just see that car first. Um, there we go. Uh, some other day, when can we expect to hear about EV6? Off topic stuff I'll get to at the end of this video, which will probably be about the 35 minute mark. Well, okay, so uh, da, 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 da. let's just go through. Will I review the Forte hatchback? Yeah, we'll call that the Forte 5 for 2022. We'll absolutely review that here. Uh, okay. Okay, a bunch of off-topic questions here. So we will definitely cover all these off-topic questions in a couple minutes. I just wanna make sure I'm answering the questions that people wanna tune in for this video for. Okay, uh, so let, okay, so we'll get to your off-topic questions. Let's go rear seat space, trunk space, quickly look at lighting, then we'll come back to your off-topic questions. And if again, if you have a like to, live, to leave, let's go for it. We got 60 people on right now, so that's pretty cool. Um, let's keep rolling. Rear seat space. First of all, people always say, I want the Sportage because it's bigger, because everybody wants more space. Nobody wants a ceramic sunroof. Two, let's take a look inside. As we jump in here, a couple things I really like about the Sportage. Again, panoramic sunroof just makes it pretty cool back here. Headroom is great with that, even fine without that. Um, the rear seat though, you can set it uncomfortably forward right there. I don't know if that looks uncomfortable to you, but the seat is actually fully square to the trunk. If you have a box in the trunk, you can slide it forward and it'll be square to the seat. Obviously nobody's gonna wanna sit here like that. You have well over 10 positions of recline from straight up and uncomfortable to kind of normal and comfortable to way back over here. So you can kind of recline, you're kind of looking out the sunroof and it's pretty cool. But there's like at least 10 positions in between there uh, that you can get to. That's a big advantage here. The Celtos, I probably won't show it to you, but it has two positions, where it is and just a hair back from that. Uh, so advantage, uh, probably Sportage. Now, overall space, you're gonna see a couple things that I really like. My feet are flat, my legs are flat on the seat. Uh, there are not many vehicles that do that correctly. So that's a big advantage with the Kia Hyundai vehicles. You're usually sitting on the seat. You're not up like this, which is way more comfortable. And of course you can see six footer sitting behind myself, tons and tons of space. These are small crossovers with big space. You also have an armrest in here with cup holders. I should probably point that out. The back of both seats, this is a, one of our few cars that is actually a cloth back seat. So I like the plastic back because you can wipe it clean with your kids. Um, not everybody's going to have that, but you do have a pocket on driver and passenger sides right there. And you have big vents and a 12 volt port. Let's quickly jump up, check the Seltos now. As we do that, you'll see the Seltos has some nice advantages as well. Jump in the Seltos back here. Again, slightly smaller, but I think you're going to be impressed. Let me show you jumping in again. Easy to jump in, big wide opening doors, no panoramic roof, but plenty of headroom. Same thing here, seats are flat on the seat, big advantage, six footer sitting behind a six footer, tons of room. The passenger side has a pocket there. This is again, still in the shipping plastic. You still have the vents and instead of a 12 volt port, you got a USB port, that makes perfect sense to me. Driver side doesn't have a pocket. Would like that, don't get it, it is what it is. Plastic is easier to wipe clean. Now the big advantage in this Seltos is, oh boy, you can't see it anymore. Let me open the door. You have the heated seats. So the rear seat bottoms are heated, two levels of seating there. Rump roasters are always a good thing. You don't get that at this price point in the Sportage. If you wanted them in the Sportage, you would jump up. Uh, we'll do trunk space. Yeah, we might as well do trunk space and then we'll get uh, going. So trunk space, let's pop them both open. Both trunks have a floor that can lower. Let's throw this down here. Uh, normally this uh, panel here would lift up. It just, uh, nobody's actually touched this car yet. So that would attach to that. So when you open the trunk, it lifts up. Uh, I think you guys all get the point. We are gonna lower this floor though, because you'll see the spare tire underneath there and you gain quite a bit of space down here. And I'm jammed up against something there. There we go. Nope, you know what? Nobody's touched this car yet and something is in the way. There's some plastic in there. All right, there we go. So uh, you can see that lowers quite a bit, you know, I don't know, quite a bit there. The Sportage is the same thing, but it will not lower quite as much. And the reason I lowered that is because my trunk measurement tool 
is my teddy bear. Yes, the teddy bear. And he's gonna require some space. This one, you can get a blind style closer. It fits in there and it closes like a blind, like a roller blind and can clip into here. It's an accessory you could get for this car. Uh, there is a little bit bigger trunk in here because it's a little bit bigger vehicle. Underfloor storage space is here. Uh, this one has an inflator kit, not a spare tire. And if you push that back like that, it does have a little bit of a ramp up to the seats. Now, let's throw a teddy bear in both. The larger of the two, you can see there's an advantage here. Sportage has a pretty good sized trunk for what it is. And again, the Seltos, I should mention, is class leading trunk space for its class. It is a class down, but for a lot of people, it's gonna be plenty. Uh, if you had a roller blind here, Teddy would be underneath it. You can see there's where the, it would uh, be. And this one, again, different style cover. Because we've lowered the floor, you're gonna see Teddy Bear, put him up against the seats there. You can see he's got all the space he needs. He's pretty comfy. And because we lowered the floor, his belly's not touching that cover. And that's kind of nice. If you've got like airport luggage, lowering the floor means you can keep him underneath your privacy cover. Works really, really, really well. All right, we are beyond 30 minutes. I think we're gonna leave lighting out of this for now. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video or you can see our other videos. Right now, I wanna make sure I'm answering the questions. If you have on topic questions, topic about questions about either of these cars, ask them now. There were some good off topic questions that I wanna answer as well. We got 72 people on, so let's see if we can get to 60 likes. That's another 12 likes. I don't think that's unreasonable. Uh, if you guys think I'm crazy, then maybe just don't like it. All right, we'll try to get to your questions right now. And is Seltos or Sportage similar to the Tucson? Good question. This is a, a more complicated answer than you would think. So the Sportage that you are looking at right now is the same platform as the previous generation Tucson. The Tucson has already jumped to the next platform. In around January, the Sportage will jump to that next platform. So the Sportage and the previous Tucson shared a platform. The new Tucson is a little bit larger now. It's actually very similar to the Santa Fe in size. So Sportage is kind of a tweener and that'll make more sense when we have the Seltos because these really aren't that far apart in size. The next generation Sportage coming out in 2022 as a 2023 model and will be different. So there we go. January, the Sportage will get a redesign. Yes. Well, I say yes. So the plan that I've seen involves probably January that we'll see the first Sportages starting to land um, for the 2023 Sportage. I know it gets confusing. Uh, then the, the hybrid model should come a few months later and the PHEV should come around summer of next year. That will be at a redesign and that will be, again, a fully new Sportage, totally new platform, a little bit longer than this and that'll kind of make the Seltos uh, fill this spot that's there right now. Right now, you kind of have two choices in the size point. Although they're, this is a little bit bigger, it's not much bigger. Um, all right, let me just jump back over here. Somebody asked how much does, uh, how does Kia recommend oil changes? Um, we are in severe climate here in Canada, so we're around every 6,000 kilometers here in Canada. It's going to be more kilometers if you're outside of the severe climate, so um, there is a difference. Somebody says, I like the interior lights on the Seltos. Yeah, me too. All right. Kia is selling the previous generation Sportage currently. However, the new generation Sportage will have the new logo. That's correct. Uh, all right. What else we got? Love the Seltos EX Premium. Only complains the digital cluster has very little customization options. The larger screen a bit... Yeah, the larger screen, it'd be cool if they had a few more customization options. I do like that large screen. I, I like the clarity. I like a lot of things on there, but you're, that's a good point. They don't customize much. And yeah, for whatever reason, you can't go full screen Android Auto. And I'll tell you right now, that's an Android Auto decision. Uh, Apple CarPlay goes full screen, Android Auto goes two-thirds screen, and you have kind of the blank screen on the right side, which is not a Kia thing. I know they'll probably say it's Kia, we'll say it's them. Well, if Apple CarPlay can do it, then uh, it's an Android Auto decision, guys. So hopefully an Android Auto update will make that go full screen, but that's not a Kia decision uh, there from what I can tell. All right. Did we lose us? Hold on. Let me know if we're still going, guys. We're still going? Okay, there we go. So a little refresh there. Which one has more leg room? They are similar. Sportage probably by a little bit, but I, again, we jumped in there and showed you that earlier. Okay, let's go to the off-topic questions. Uh, when can we expect to hear about the Kia EV6? I'm expecting that we can order the EV6 this month. That's what I've been told. So expect a video from me very soon on us actually ordering our 
Kia EV6. So when you order Kiwi, Kia EV6, if you're in Ontario, you're gonna give the, you have to order through the Kia website and you're gonna be given the option to, or, to choose your dealer. If you're in Ontario, I really encourage you to choose us because there are dealers out there that don't have the knowledge that I have. Let's just be blunt, I've studied these cars. Uh, I want you to have the best ownership experience possible and it's easier for me to dedicate a lot of my time to our customers. Uh, if you buy from us, it's way easier for me to spend a bunch of time with you to make sure you know what's going on with that. So why is the EV6 coming before the new generation Forte and Sportage? Uh, the Forte is coming out very soon, like next month as well. Uh, and again, you can order the EV6. It will not show up first. We are going to see the new Forte before we see the new EV6 on the roads. Uh, Sportage and EV6 could be a toss up. I think we'll see more Sportages on the road earlier, but we may see some EV6s earlier. It's, it's really hard to tell when they're coming. I don't know for sure. Okay, there was another off topic here that was good, but I forgot it. So if you've asked a question and I didn't get to it, just go ahead and ask that uh, question again. Can the Seltos manage floodwaters? Uh, depends on how much floodwaters. I wouldn't go anything above maybe the axles on a traditional car. Uh, this isn't a Jeep Wrangler. So a Jeep Wrangler can go through a ton of water. And that's what you should buy if you're doing that. But general flood, I'm not sure. Uh, some of us know about Asian market in Bangladesh. When is it arriving in Bangladesh? I have no idea. I don't, I, don't, I work in Canada. I don't even know when it's coming to Canada, to be very honest. I'm guessing a little bit. I have no idea when these things are coming to Bangladesh. Do you know what will be redesigned in the Sportage? Everything. It's a ground up redesign. Okay. Uh, where are we going here? There was another question I missed earlier, and I don't, I feel a little bad for missing it. There was, um, Da, 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 da. I can't find it, guys. If there's a question that I, that you think I missed, uh, an off-topic question as well. Uh, headlights as well. Oh, yeah, not just headlights. Ground up redesign. The, if you search 2023 Kia Sportage online, you'll see what it has. Uh, the European version is shorter than the model we'll get. We're getting the Korean version, essentially. Um, didn't know of you until after you taught me more than any other video or the dealer I dealt with. So next time around for sure. Yeah, yeah no problem. Uh, I don't mind if you guys buy other places. It's just sometimes, especially with EVs, uh, if you're anywhere in our area, there's going to be a lot of questions about those vehicles, and I do spend a ton of time researching them, so I do want to help you with them. Um, it's just easier for me to justify spending that time. So there we go. Okay, so I think we're going to leave it right there, guys. Um, tomorrow we're taking a look at Hyundai vehicle. I want to go back to the Elantra, so uh, we're going to spend some time looking at that vehicle tomorrow. Uh, any plans could change as we find out more about the EV6. I've got a Kia class out right now, Kia Hyundai class, excuse me, out right now, about seat heaters. That's pretty cool. It's getting a lot of views over the left weekend, so make sure you watch that. i got another Kia Hyundai class coming out this week, uh, talking about the high beams lights, some of the things that I didn't understand about them that I've now made sense of, so you can make sense of it. So there we go. What other Kia vehicles will we get in the PHEV version? Any affordable ones? So PHEVs have been popular right now. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, PHEV Sorento just showed up. PHEV Nero, the next, the 2022 model anyways, is showing up very, very soon. I'll get that on film as well. The only one I have confirmed beyond that is the Kia Sportage PHEV. And again, when I say confirmed, anything could change. Uh, but they are playing the Kia Sportage PHEV probably summer-ish of next year. So those are the only three confirmed, but stay tuned because a lot of EV type products are coming out. Uh, Pat and I, my, the owner of the dealership here, we're going to the LA Auto Show. We may find stuff out there as well. So... That's it for today, guys. We're back tomorrow. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for watching. Feel free to hit the subscribe button and uh, stay tuned. Like I said, we have, this is our long form video. A lot of short form stuff coming up in the future as well. So make sure you subscribe to see some of that. Have a great afternoon, guys. Happy Monday. We'll see you again tomorrow.